Good evening to all of you. In my name and my wife's name, I want to thank each and every one who's joining us tonight in this special celebration of the bar mitzvah of our grandson, Ben Sien. And let us hope that we shall always be able to meet at Simchus. There was once a priest that went into a clothing store to buy a suit. And he looked over the different suits and finally he selected a suit that he felt, felt was just fit for him. He goes over to the cashier and he asks the cashier how much the suit costs. So the owner of the store comes over and says, I understand that you're a member of the cloth, you're a clergyman, it's on the house. Just take it and use it in good health. He thanked him and he left. A few days later, the store owner receives a thank you letter from him for his generosity, for his courtesy, for what he did for him. Short time later, a minister comes into the store and he too selects a suit and wants to pay. And the store owner tells him the same thing that I do not take any money from manager of the clergy and just have it in good health. And he too receives a letter shortly afterwards, a thank you letter. Then a rabbi comes into the store and he too takes a suit and he wants to pay for it. And the store owner tells him, listen, I'm a Jew. If I didn't take money from the priest and from the minister, how can I take one from a rabbi? Please use it in good health. What did he do? He sent him another rabbi. <laughs> you have rabbis here, and now you have another rabbi. It is customary at a celebration of a bar mitzvah to address oneself to the guest of honor who is the bar mitzvah boy himself. And as Yossi mentioned before, the difference the way parents speak to a child or grandparents. And by the way, we have in our home a sign, grandparents are made to spoil the grandchildren. So therefore, I'm going to address Ben Sian, but in a louder voice that maybe some other people could also hear and listen, and maybe they will benefit from it also. You have just heard the kind words that our grandchildren had addressed you. By the way, the poem that Rachel read to you, she wrote it all by herself. That was her own making. It's not the first one that she wrote. I think one of them was printed in the Charlotte Jewish News last week. On the day of a bal mitzvah, we identified the bal mitzvah boy with mitzvahs, with commandments. One of the outstanding commandments that a bar mitzvah boy is identified with is with the fact that when he reaches the age of 13, he starts to put on the tefillin, the phylacteries. All of you have a copy of the tefillin on your table in the centerpiece, which we have to give credit to Mrs. Hani Weiss for the nice work that you did for us. The film have, as you see, two cases, two boxes. Each of these boxes contain four sections of the Torah of the Bible. One of them are put on, usually on your left hand, opposite your heart. The second one is put on your head, just above the forehead, between the two eyes. Each of these two cubics contain the exact same four sections of the film. The first one of which is the Kriya Shema, the Shema Yisroel, that we say twice a day. Every mitzvah, every commandment that we perform, in addition 
to performing it in its physical sense, there is a certain meaning behind it. Why did the Almighty ask us, and what is the purpose of performing that mitzvah? Or mainly, what lesson do we take from the mitzvah that we observe? When it comes to this special mitzvah of the film, the question is, why do we have two? You know, the story is told that at Mount Sinai, which we're going to celebrate the holiday of Shavuos when the Torah was given, how can we have two tablets? Why wasn't it enough to have one tablet? They even asked the Almighty, how much does it cost? He said, it's free of charge. If it's free of charge, let us have two. <laughs> but we have two pair of film. We have two parts of the film. One is put on the hand, and one is put on the head. The one that's put on the hand is to teach the Jewish people and everyone that your actions, which comes through the hand, should be guided and dedicated, devoted to the will of the Almighty. It is supposed to be put on your arm opposite your heart to tell you that the emotions, the feeling of the heart should also be guided by the Torah. The feeling that you put on your head is to teach a person that his thought, his intellectual capacities should coincide with the wishes of the Almighty. Because the Almighty created a person on this world with a mission, with a purpose. And just when someone invents a certain machine, with that machine, he gives us a list of his instructions how to use the machine. If somebody buys a certain computer or any other type of mechanical, electrical mechanical machine, he always looks for the list of instruction because he wants to be sure that he will not damage the machine. The human being is the machine that the Almighty created. And along with that machine, he gave us a list of instructions. And that list of how to assure the well-being of the human being, how to assure, to fulfill and carry out the mission of the human being, that is found in the list of instructions which is known as the Torah, as the Bible. What is the idea of the two parts of the film? To be very brief, as, as I was instructed by my son that I have to be short, then usually the father always tells the son what has to be done. We live in a new era today that the children have to listen to the parents. You know, there was a kid that once came home from school, a teenager, and he was very despondent, he was very disturbed. And his parents asked him, what's happened in school? Why are you so disturbed? I just can't tell you. Finally, you know, after grueling him once again, he said that something happened today in school. What happened? The principal came into school and he tells us that from now on, each and every one of you can conduct themselves and behave yourself as you wish. So the parents say, so why are you unhappy about it? You should be happy. You can do everything that you want. The teenager says, why don't you understand? If I do something now what I want, I'm doing it because the principal said I have to do it. It's taking away the joy and excitement from doing something which is negative to the principal and the parents. And that's what's bothering me. Why don't I have now an opportunity to do something which is rebellious? We live today in a time that we have to follow what our children tell us. As you saw, thank God that we have such wonderful children, any o'clock, and everyone should have nachas from theirs. So I will be very brief with my few words, which I still want to tell you. It'll just take a few more moments. What's the idea of putting on tefillin on your hand, on your head? Our sages tell us that tefillin that we put on the hand is to be covered and concealed. The tefillin that you put on your head is revealed and it's open. And this tells us a very, very important message. The tefillin reminds a person that there are two parts in his life. There are two missions in his life. There are two important factors in his life. One is to be concerned about himself. 
What is happening in his own personal and private life? How much is he growing in his own life? How much more good is he doing as an individual person for himself? Alongside with that, the Torah tells us one should never satisfy himself with what they have accomplished for themselves. What are you doing for your neighbor? What are you doing for people that are outside of yourself? Are you extending a helping hand to them also? And that's where the tefillin on the head comes exposed to show that this is the part of life of a person that he has to be reminded. He cannot satisfy himself with his accomplishments, what he does for himself, but he always has to have in mind. He always has to think, how much can he help another person, another family, another community? And this is one of the lessons been seen that Hasidus teaches us when you put on the tefillin every morning. And you remind yourself that in the tefillin it says, Shema Yisrael Hashem Alekeinu Hashem Echod. That we should always remember that there is one God in this world, and He is the one who created us, and He is the one who is guiding us. And He tells you every morning, charity starts at home, that's true. You have to never forget about yourself. Never neglect your growth, your accomplishments, what you have to achieve further and further in this world. world. But don't forget that you also have an obligation to someone else. We all know that tonight and tomorrow is a special day in the Jewish history, in the Jewish calendar. Tonight is the yard site of one of the greatest sages that lived, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochoi. And one of the most important things that he taught us from his rabbi, Rabbi Akiva, the Yahafta Lariyacho Kamecho, the mitzvah, the command that we have to love your neighbor as yourself. This is the generality of all of the Torah. The basis of Torah is to extend love and kindness and goodness to your fellow neighbor. And that's where the film comes in every morning before a person starts and goes out into the world. The Torah asks them, please put on the film on your hand and on your head to remember that as the day goes by, what are you going to accomplish for yourself and what are you going to accomplish for your neighbor? And truthfully, we must say that this is exactly what the Lubavitcher Rebbe has instituted among his chassidim and especially among his emissaries. I am sure that all of you appreciate the fact that for a Hasidic religious family to uproot itself from a Hasidic community and to settle in a community which at the beginning is strange to this type of life, it's very difficult and it's a tremendous sacrifice. But the Rebbe said that this is a living film. Each Jew is a living film. You cannot only be concerned about yourself. You must go out and reach out as much as possible to each and every Jew, man, woman, and child, and bring to them the true knowledge what it means to be Jewish. What does it mean to have one God in this world? And therefore, Ben Sinyan, you had the schus The merit to have a family that the Rebbe sent to Charlotte, North Carolina, and as the slogan goes, to kindle the sparks of Judaism in the Carolinas. And I think some 13 years ago when I was here the first time, I had then mentioned about it and I said that the time has come that from the sparks you should become torches. This is the message that the Rebbe has asked us to do. And this is the message that his followers, his emissaries, his shaluchim, as you see you have a group of them here, that we have to give him all the credit in the world for sacrificing their own families and themselves and going out and try to assist others. They are the living film that we are looking at. And let us hope that Ben Sian and his other brothers and sisters will follow in suit of his parents and to do the same when they grow up. And the Zohar tells us that the day of our Bar Mitzvah, the joy and the happiness is no less 
than that of the joy and happiness of a wedding when two Jewish people unite and become one union. So therefore, at this so special occasion of our bal mitzvah, let us all join together in a real simcha. Let us all show the Almighty how we are celebrating the simcha of a mitzvah of a boy entering into the age of being a bar mitzvah. And in future years, hopefully, he will also be a lantern. He will bring light, joy, and happiness to many, many people. And let us all hope that soon, and not only soon, but immediately, we will merit the coming of Mashiach. And as the Rebbe said, that each and every one of us has to prepare ourselves and prepare, and, and prepare our neighbors for the coming of Mashiach. And we will have the true simcha, the true joy, what every Jew is looking forward for when Mashiach will come. I thank you again for listening. I thank you again for joining us with the simcha. And I wish my children Mazel tov, mazel tov, and mazel tov to all of us. Good evening to all of you.